Leeds are good against good teams and, and not so good against not so good teams. And, and that was pretty much the way that this one played out. Mm, okay. Seb, there's another sort of element to Jesse Marsh here. In, in his post-match interview, uh, he was very buoyant, um, obviously. Uh, but he, 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 he spent a lot of time emphasi- emphasizing the unity of the team. He shouted we about three times, uh, to really emphasize that it was a we, not an I. Uh, <laughs> to emphasize that it was a we. Sorry, that made me laugh. Um, but, uh, you know, also there were players that uh, aggressively hugged him after the game. It, you know, he doesn't seem like a, a manager who's lost the dressing room at all. Like the players seem to like him. Yeah. I'm, I'm always a little suspicious of that stuff because there's a lot of adrenaline. It's a big game. It's a big win at Anfield, last minute winner. So I don't know. I mean, I, I watched an interview with him this morning, which was quite spiky. Uh, he was, he was asked about the pressure he was experiencing, I think by Sky's Patrick Davidson. And he was kind of, it was one of those where the, uh, the interviewer asked this sort of lighthearted question was clearly expecting a little bit of a kind of Frank Lampard chuckle before the answer. And it didn't arrive and it became a little bit awkward. And I think what I find interesting about him at the moment is that he talks about underlying numbers. It's quite rare that, I mean, it's, it's obviously pretty common on a podcast and in, on football Twitter, but to hear a manager start talking about, yeah, but our online numbers are good. I know we've only got, you know, X points and Y games, but you know, it doesn't really matter, but well, not doesn't really matter, but, um, I'm going to apply my own context. And that's quite a hard sell, um, to a traditional fan. Yeah. But I, I found myself nodding long to some of the things he said because he, he made some good points about Leeds game plan. And he made some good points. He sort of made some good diagnostic points about where Liverpool's weaknesses were. And there was one moment of, of I, I felt it was sort of really good coaching at the end where for the goal that won the game, um, Brendan Aronson presses three different players really, really well, um, within the same sort of 30 second period in the 89th minute of the game. Now, like a lot of people, when we talk about pressing, you think, oh, well, that's just running and getting in someone's face and making sure that you, you know, you're showing effort. Whereas, in this phase, it was just really precise, um, actually having an effect on the ball, actually having an effect on, um, Liverpool's exit. And then as soon as the, um, as soon as the ball came back into the Liverpool defensive zone, um, we all know what happened next. But I, I, I don't know. I don't, I don't really have any skin in the kind of the Jesse Marsh Leeds game. It's just that, um, I kind of enjoy the, the, sort of the frankness of being able to discuss things like that rather than kind of resort to the, uh, you know, unlucky here and, um, injury that and bad refereeing decision. And I, I get it. Like I, I obviously understand also that fans have an emotional response to it, but it was, um, it was interesting to listen to him. Yeah. I think it's interesting that he's talking about the underlying numbers and I, I'm not surprised that he's talking about those because that's pretty much the only good thing about the last few months of Leeds United. Right. So, um, everyone is, everyone who wants, this to be the the way that things are going to go in the future are going to have to hang on to those numbers in order to justify Jesse Marsh being there um and i think um, again like that's that's fine that's the way that clubs should operate they should be looking at the underlying numbers they should be aware of what is going on um but i like i said like i say if you dig into some of the the caveats behind those those underlying numbers then it does sort of paint a slightly different picture it's an interesting conundrum right because um on the field things don't look great if Leeds are playing non top six sides um and yeah i i think it i just find it interesting that clearly the club are hanging on to those underlying numbers now and they're saying this is this is this is it like we are going to trust the numbers and we're going to hope that those numbers start leveling out in terms of results rather than um than just performances at this point and i think in a few games time we'll have a good sense of whether or not a corner has been turned um i'm not at the point where i think that corner has been turned because this very much fits my narrative and my narrative is that we will be good against good sides and it's but it's those res- games against smaller teams where we really need to be picking up a lot of points to stay up. I mean, if you look at the numbers now, we're a point above the relegation zone. We have picked up 50% of our points so far against Chelsea and and Liverpool. Um, and I just don't think that's a particularly sustainable way of, of, of getting points in the Premier League. So I still think there's a lot of work to do. Um, but yeah, interesting to hear that the club are hanging on to those underlying numbers. Here's the thought, though. If you were to uh, beat every big six team, both home and away, that would be 38 points wouldn't it or 36 that's historically that's enough to stay up so if you <laughs> lost to everyone else leads and you just beat the top six uh, home and away that would be fine but seb go ahead well no it's just a, it's quite an interesting problem to have because 
if you're good against top six sides, for a side like Leeds at the moment, those are the games when you're going to be televised and those are the games which are going to attract the biggest neutral audience. So you have one group of people who have one perception of Leeds, like people who perhaps, you know, watch the Liverpool game or watch the Chelsea game. And then a group of fans who watch every game religiously and, you know, and that is the majority because you're not going to, well, you have two or three games, um, you know, a month or every, every two months or so against like, you know, televised teams, teams that kind of attract the nation's attention, the world's attention. And then you struggle through and try and preach about, well, underlying numbers, this, and in game state that it's a very difficult argument to win in that way. And, um, yeah, it's, it's just a kind of a modern football ism. I'm in that kind of modern football ranty mood today. Sorry. Yeah. No, I like it. I like it. If you like this video, please consider subscribing to the channel. The Athletic is home to some of the world's best sports journalists, including David Ornstein, Daniel Taylor, Ollie Kay, Amy Lawrence and Rafa Honigstein. There are journalists dedicated to each Premier League team, so every fan gets the coverage they deserve, not just the big clubs. And you can try it for free now for 30 days. See the link in the description.